Can people be made of corn? According to Maya tradition, they can. But it took the Maya gods a while to figure out how to do it. At first they made people out of things like mud and wood, but these creatures couldn't speak. Finally, the gods mixed their blood with maize flour. The result? Walking, talking, human beings. No wonder the early Maya called themselves the people of the maize. The Maya emerged around the same time as the Zapotec. Their culture began to develop to the east of the Zapotec in areas of present-day southern Mexico and Central America around 1500 BC. These areas included lowlands in the north, highlands in the south, the forests of the Yucatan Peninsula, and the tropical jungles of Mexico and Guatemala. Like the Olmec farmers, Maya farmers developed successful agricultural practices. They produced surpluses of corn, including beans, chili peppers, cacao beans, and of course, maize, which the Maya considered sacred. These surpluses allowed some people to become priests, merchants, and craftspeople and some villages to gain great wealth. Wealthier villages with religious ceremonial centers arose around 500 BC. In time, these villages grew into cities. The development of the Maya cities produced a class system with four main classes. At the top was the king who performed religious ceremonies and was believed to have descended from the gods. Next came priests and warriors. The priests decided when farmers could plant and when people could marry. They also conducted important religious ceremonies. Warriors were well respected and well trained. Merchants and craftspeople followed these upper classes. Craftspeople made articles out of pottery and designed buildings and temples. The merchants sold and traded goods often with buyers in other Maya cities. Finally, farmers who made up the majority of the population and slaves were at the bottom of the heap. Most slaves were prisoners of war. They were given the worst jobs and were often killed when their masters died. Class determined where people lived and how they dressed. People who belonged to the upper classes lived in stone buildings and wore colorfully decorated clothes and jewelry. Farmers wore plain clothes and lived in mud huts. While wealthy enjoyed a comfortable lifestyle, farmers worked hard in the heat to grow their crops. On hillsides they carved out terraces on which to grow their maize, cacao beans, and chili peppers. In drier areas they dug channels that carried river water to their fields. In addition to doing their own work, sometimes farmers had to tend the king's fields and build monuments and temples in his cities. Eventually the Maya learned how to track seasonal changes. This knowledge helped them predict the best time to plant and harvest their crops. You will learn more about how the Maya measured time later in this chapter. Above all, however, the farmers looked to their gods to control the weather and increase their harvests. Religion was central to everyone's lives. And the Maya worshipped many gods, including the gods of fire, sun, war, rain, and maize. All of these gods were thought to influence every aspect of people's lives in both good and bad ways. To please the gods, the Maya made frequent offerings of food, animals, plants, and precious objects. As you have already learned, the Maya believed that Terry gods had given their blood to create people. In return, the Maya sometimes offered their own blood or made human sacrifices to honor their gods. Just as maize nourished people, the Maya believed that blood nourished the gods. Rather than sacrifice one of their own, however, the Maya often sacrificed a member of the lowest class in their society, a slave. In the 1800s, explorers battled mosquitoes, illness, and thick jungle growth in their search for the ruined remains of the Maya civilization. Their efforts paid off. When they came upon the half-buried monuments in the ancient Maya city of Copan, one of the explorers, John Lloyd Stevens, was so fascinated by what he saw that he purchased the site on the spot. Many of the great Maya cities lay hidden beneath the jungle growth for centuries. One of the earliest of these cities was El Mirador, which has been called the cradle of the Maya civilization. The city flourished from about 300 BC to AD 150 and was home to as many as 200,000 people. Most Mayan cities, however, developed during the Classic period, which lasted between AD 250 and 900. These cities included Copan, Tikal, Chichen Itza, and Palenque. Although each was an independent city-state ruled by a king, trade linked the city-states. Merchants from the cities exchanged goods such as salt and jade jewelry and often paid for them with cacao beans. Most Maya cities followed a similar layout. A large plaza in the center of the city served as both a public gathering place and market. 
each city also contained a palace for the king, administrative buildings, temples, and stepped pyramids. The pyramids rose hundreds of feet in the air and were lined with steep staircases. Many of the pyramids featured platforms at the top. Priests conducted ceremonies on the platforms so that the entire population could witness them. The Maya built temples on the top of some of the pyramids. A huge ball court was constructed at the foot of at least one of these pyramids in each city to allow athletes to play the sacred Mesoamerican ball game. The Maya played this game, which began with the Olmec, to honor their gods. The illustration shows modern-day Maya athletes in action on the court. Like the ball game, many other aspects of Maya culture and art were linked to religion. Artists made sculptures that honored and brought life to various Maya gods. They also carved stone slabs called stele to honor their kings. Artists carved the king's likeness on the slab and recorded his actions on it as well actually setting his story in stone. All of these stories were probably passed down orally from generation to generation. This oral tradition continued long after the great Maya civilization had come to an end. It may have been weakened by war, food shortages, or overcrowding. For whatever reason, by AD 900, the Maya had abandoned many of their cities. When Spanish conquerors arrived in the 1500s, only weakened city-states had been left behind a shadow of their former glory. In 2012, the prediction went viral, on December 21, the world was going to end. The prediction was based on the Maya calendar, which some people claimed would end on that day. But the date simply marked the completion of a 5,125-year cycle. The Maya had calculated that a new cycle would begin on the 22nd. The Maya were superb mathematicians. Like the people of ancient India, they developed the concept of zero. They also developed a sophisticated number system using positions to show place value and to calculate sums up to the hundreds of millions. Such calculations were used to record astronomical observations as well. Maya astronomers observed the sun, moon, planets, and stars and were able to predict their movements with great accuracy all without the aid of any instruments. Instead, they studied the sky from temple observatories. Astronomers used their observations to calculate the best times for planting and harvesting crops and for religious celebrations. These astronomical observations and calculations were used to develop an elaborate 365-day calendar that was nearly as accurate as our own. Archaeologists gained a better understanding of the Maya people's scientific achievements and culture once they began to crack the code of their writing system. The Maya used symbolic pictures called glyphs to represent words, syllables, and sounds that could be combined into complex sentences. The Maya carved glyphs into their monuments, stele, and tombs. Maya writers, called scribes, also used them to record their people's history in a folded book made of tree bark paper called a codex. The Spanish conquerors destroyed most of the codices in the 1500s. However, after the Spanish arrived, the Maya wrote other books in which they recorded Maya history and culture. The most famous of these books is called the Papal Vu, which recounts the Maya creation story. As you've already learned, the Maya civilization had greatly declined by AD 900. However, Maya people today still keep their culture alive. Many of them speak the Maya languages and tell their ancestors' stories. They are a living legacy of the Maya civilization.